Welcome to my lesson that's all about CIE IGCSE English as a Second Language Exercise 5, which is informal letter writing. Actually, these days, the question can also be informal email writing, um, but the point is still the same. It's generally where you have to write a letter to a friend um, about something that has happened to you. Um, so whereas exercise six tests your formal writing, exercise five tests your informal writing. So your ability to use informal, casual, friendly language with some slang and some idiom. Let's have a look at an example of an opening to an exercise five. Dear Jared Rigby. Hello, my friend. It has been so long since we last saw each other. I miss you so much. Let me tell you something that happened to me. Have a think to yourself, is, is this a good opening or is it a bad opening and why? Um, pause the screen now, read it back again and really think why is this good or why is this bad? So hopefully you've realised that this is a really bad opening to an exercise five. So remember exercise five is you are writing to a friend. Now would you call your friend their full name, Jared Rigby? Doesn't that sound really weird? Would you go up to your friend on the corridor and call them by their first and second name? No, it's super formal. And it's not even just that it's formal, it's that it sounds kind of weird and awkward. Then you're saying, hello, my friend. Do you ever call your friend, my friend? No, because they're your friend. They know that they're your friend, so you don't need to say it. So it's awkward. Um, it has been so long since we last saw each other. Why are you telling your friend that? They know. They, they also know how long it has been since they last saw you. I miss you so much. Ah, sounds genuine and emotional. Let me tell you about something that happened to me. Okay, right, so been so long, missed you so much, and now I'm going to ignore you and tell you all about something that happened. You're not really talking to the friend. You're not really showing any personal relationship or details about their life. You're not really showing that they care. And this kind of repetition of these short, simple sentences as well just makes it sound like so uh, robotic and mechanical and emotionless. Here's a slightly better opening. Have a think about why this is better. Hey, Jared. Why didn't you reply to my last message? So rude. Thank you for the flowers you gave me, but I think you might need those back. You see, I bumped into your girlfriend the other day. Pause the screen again. Why is this a better opening to an informal letter? Okay, so first of all, it's better because I'm not calling him Jared Rigby anymore. I'm calling him just by his first name, which sounds a lot more natural. Also, hey is more casual than dear. Dear you would tend to use in a very formal letter. Hey is a lot more casual. Then also take a look at the punctuation. We've got some exclamation marks and ellipses, dot, dot, dot. We call that ellipses. And that makes it sound quite casual and quite spoken. Because when you talk to your friend, you would tend to be a little bit over the top, a little bit dramatic, a little bit excited to see them. Think about how you talk to your friends in the corridor at school. You would be like, ah, I can't believe this happened. Oh my God, da, 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 da. Like you would be very, very dramatic. And so to show that excitement in written language, we use that exclamation mark. Now the dot, 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 the ellipses, that shows that pause, maybe like you're thinking. So basically, you're trying to use punctuation marks in order to mirror to be just like spoken language. Um, then also notice that you're showing their relationship. So you're showing the relationship between you, the writer, and Jared, the friend, right? They've got a history. Why didn't you reply to my last message? Right? So this shows that something has happened before the letter was written so that you've actually got this personal relationship with who you're writing to. Not only that, but you're kind of joking with them. So rude. So you've got like this um, 
relationship with a person where you can be mean, but it's in a funny way. I bet lots of you have got friendships like that. Also, thank you for the flowers you gave me. So that all of this is kind of building up to, it's not just this one-off random letter that you're sending to the person, but that you've got this friendship where you've got jokes that have happened between you, you've given each other gifts, you've got stories that you've shared. Um, you see, again, this is something else that makes it sound quite spoken. We say things like you see and um, as you know, when we're thinking about what we're going to say next. So you see sounds quite casual. I bumped into your girlfriend the other day. Bumped into means when you meet someone by surprise. So it's an idiom. So we're using some idioms to make it sound a little bit more informal and casual. You can also notice that I am using a contraction here, didn't. Contractions are where you make the words shorter. So instead of saying did not, we say didn't. And that again makes it sound more informal because it's how people really speak in real life. We make our words shorter. So all of these reasons make it a much better opening to uh, an, an exercise five. We're going to have a look now at some of the key things that you need to do for an exercise five and also have a look at a full example. So your teacher will have given you this cheat sheet that I made and it's basically one document that tells you everything that you need to know about exercise five. Let me just zoom in so that you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so let's start off with structure then. So the structure should look like this. You should have a short introduction, one paragraph about bullet point one, one paragraph about bullet point two, one paragraph about bullet point three, and a short conclusion. Just a reminder that this is what the question looks like. So you unexpectedly met a friend you had not seen in a long time. You decided to spend the day together. Write a letter to a relative about your day. In your letter, explain what you were doing when you met your friend. Describe what you did together. Say how you felt about the day. So like I said, you should have one paragraph per bullet point. And if we take another look at the structure, you'll see that they are equal in length. Now, a common mistake that people do is they'll either write one paragraph about all three bullet points and then maybe they'll get confused and they'll forget some details or they will write a huge paragraph about bullet point one, a medium sized paragraph about bullet point two and about two sentences about bullet point three. And actually, if you do that, you're not fully answering the question. So you're not going to be able to get the highest marks. So it helps you to remember to write about all three bullet points and it helps you to see how much detail you're giving. So I think it's really important to write one paragraph per bullet point and to make sure that they are equal in length. I think about four or five sentences per bullet point is enough. And then maybe two to three sentences for the introduction and conclusion is a good amount too. Next, we are going to talk about purpose. So purpose is why are you writing to this friend about this topic? In other words, why should this particular person that you're talking to care about what you're writing? You need to give a reason why you're telling that friend about your topic. So for example, if you're writing about a trip to a safari, which is like an outside zoo, it's because you know that your friend loves animals and wants to become a vet. If the question is all about festivals and you go to a music festival, it's because your friend is a music student. So you need to give a reason why that friend cares about that topic and that gives it a really clear purpose. Otherwise, it's like, hi, Jared, how are you? Long time no see. Miss you so much. Let me tell you all about my day. And, and that's not really a clear purpose. It just seems quite random. So you need to think, why did they care? Here are some useful sentences that you can just memorise and use in any exam for this. I know that you've always been interested in topic, so that's whatever topic the exam question is about. So I thought you might be interested to hear what happened to me recently. Or something happened to me recently that really reminded me of you, so I just had to tell you. So these sentences help to create purpose. Why should that friend care about that topic? 
Similar is audience. So audience is about making your friends sound like a real person that you have a relationship with. So think about your best friend, right? Your very, very best friend. You would have memories with them. You would have personal jokes. And when you talk to them, you would talk about those things, right? Otherwise, it just makes you sound like you're a robot. So you should include some of those memories and personal jokes in your writing, ideally related to the question, in order to get the highest marks for audience. Here are some useful sentences that you can just remember and use in the exam. I still remember about the time you blah, 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 like whatever memory, you can make that up, and laughed myself about it. You always did enjoy to laugh at my mistakes, didn't you? You'll never guess what happened next. See, by using the word you, then that's creating audience because you're showing that you're writing to a person. So that really helps to do that as well. Next, we're going to talk about register. Register means how formal or informal your writing is. So because this is a letter to a friend, you are going to be using informal language and, and slang. Um, but don't use online speak or use emojis or say you instead of you, because you're still trying to use proper grammar, but you're just trying to use some informal languages. Here's some useful sentences that you can remember and use. How are you doing? I've missed you so much. So we've got the so in capitals and we've got an exclamation mark. And I think it's okay to use yeah, but not all the way through, just once. I bet you won't believe what happened to me, exclamation mark. How's about we meet up again sometime soon? Notice that in each of these sentences, I've used contractions again because it sounds more casual, more informal. Register can also include idioms. So here are some useful idioms that you can use in your writing. On top of the world, sick to the back teeth, blessing in disguise, get out of hand, hang in there, hit the sack, to make a long story short, make matters worse, under the weather, your guess is as good as mine, hang out together, grab a cup of joe, catch a flick, keep it low key, get down on Friday. Maybe only my class will understand the last one. If not, you guys should totally check out Friday by Rebecca Black. It's the world's best song. So um, let's have a look at an example answer then. And this is in response to this question. Now, what's unusual about this question is usually you're writing to a friend, but in this one, you're writing to a relative. A relative means a family member. Um, so that's a little bit unusual, but still, I think that the letter would be informal because if you've got a close relationship to your family, you wouldn't speak to them formally. Um, what's also important to notice about this question is it says you unexpectedly met a friend. So you didn't meet up with a friend making plans, but you were out doing something when you met a friend by surprise. OK, so that's what's really important to focus on in this question, a common mistake I see for this one. Uh, focus on the unexpectedly and the relative. Let's read my example. Hey, Cousin Amy. I can't believe it's almost been six months since I last saw you. Was that at Grandpa's birthday party or the morning after? Anyway, you'll never believe who I bumped into. Seriously, you'll never guess. It was Carl. You know, the one you almost dated, haha. -ha. So, I was just hanging out by myself in town last Saturday. To be honest, my sisters would totally drive me crazy. You know what they're like. I decided to go into Manchester to grab a cup of joe and finally finish my homework for economics at Starbucks. I was just queuing up to pay for my frappuccino when I heard Carl's distinctive, distinctive southern accent behind me. I wheeled around and there he was, looking exactly the same as when we were 16. Crazy, right? So that paragraph is all answering the first bullet point. Explain what you were doing when you met your friend. So this is what you were doing before the friend came along and just about when you first saw them. The next paragraph is going to be what you did together. We were chatting and decided to spend the day together since Carl was also by himself. We went to the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry. You'd 
love it. We should go next time you're here. We saw the planetarium and learned all about the Big Bang. After that, we went to catch a flick at the Odeon Cinema, so we saw the Martian. You know, since we were kind of having a science-themed day. Now the next paragraph is going to be all about how I felt about that day. I had a really good day with Carl and it almost made me miss being in high school. I said almost. Actually, that made me feel a bit sad to think about all the friends I had once that I never speak to anymore. It's strange how time moves on, huh? Anyway, to make a long story short, I kind of told Carl that you were single and gave him your number. Hope you don't mind. That made me feel so happy. Guess you can call me Cupid now. Miss you lots. Please call me soon. Love, Sarah. So, what I want you to do is to have a look at this letter and I want you to mark it for um, purpose. So why are you writing to that friend? Audience, um, how do I create a relationship and a friendship with that friend that makes them sound like a real person? And register. So some informal language and slang that I use. So idioms, informal language, slang. Also look at punctuation and contractions. Let's make a note for the rest of it. Why are you writing to that friend about this topic? Uh, audience, how do I make uh, the person sound real or show a relationship? Yeah. And what I suggest that you do is that you highlight them in three different colours so that it's really easy for you to see. That, and then I would go through and highlight it. After you've done that, you should take a screenshot. So take a picture of your highlighted letter um, and give that to your teacher so that they can check that you have done the work. I hope that it's been a useful class for you um, and that you've enjoyed it. See you soon.